Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today I want to talk on our nice outdoors here about uh, which Linux distribution you install might depend a little bit about your hardware. And we're going to talk about not the individual distributions, but the broad families. Um, and so included in our broad families, uh, you have things like Arch, you have things like Debian, which is going to encompass, uh, let's see, Arch is going to couple us Arch, Endeavor, Manjaro, uh, Arch Labs, um, Arco Linux, all those are all based on Arch. Then you have Debian is going to encompass Ubuntu and everything based on that, which is going to be like your Peppermint, your Linux Mint, uh, your Zorin OS is a popular one. Uh, Linux Lite is a popular one. All of those would be encompassed under Debian with a little tip of the hat that Ubuntu sometimes does a few different things with kernels that will uh, have a little bit of an impact on what you're doing as well. Uh, and then you'll have Fedoras. Um, so Red Hat, Fedora. You'll have OpenSUSE, which I don't know a ton about the kernel development on that one off the top of my head. Um, and then you have um, things like Gen2. Now, of all of those branches, the, the three most popular branches you're likely going to find yourself in, uh, probably in order, is going to be a Debian, then Arch, then Fedora. And what's going to make the difference as to which distribution that you choose is probably going to boil down into your hardware. And what we mean is there's a few different elements you're going to look at in your hardware that is going to determine which distributions might work. Uh, better. For example, my uh, newer Linux Mint laptop, that has a, a fairly modern processor with fairly modern integrated graphics. The regular Linux Mint did not work super well, so I had to get in there and update the kernel. Here's the rub as to which uh, basic family is going to work better. You need to look at what your hardware is and what the kernel is. And I got to thinking about this because the uh, the latest kernel, the, the 6, I think it's the 6.3, has a release candidate available. 6.2 just came out officially with uh, a lot of extra support for very modern processors. Uh, the, the latest in the Intel processors, the latest in the Ryzen processors, the latest in the Indiv um, NVIDIA, but also there have been some modifications to the latest kernel and Raspberry Pis and uh, having better support for multiple 4K monitors on the Raspberry Pi. All of these are things that the kernel is primarily what is involved in rather than the distro itself. And so with the latest versions, I think the latest version of Arch, which just dropped a couple days ago from when I'm doing the video, that still has the, um, the newest 6.1 kernel, although 6.2 is already out. It's just not officially in anything that I know of directly. Now, here's where the rub comes into, uh, into mind, is if you're, you bought a computer and has the latest stuff, it's going to work a lot better on an Arch system than on a Debian system. Because Debian, by its nature, does not have the latest up-to-date kernels. It doesn't assume the latest cutting-edge hardware. And so it's not going to work quite as well with, um, with the latest hardware that has just been dropping. Whereas the latest versions of Arch, which always has some of the newer kernels, is going to support a whole lot more uh, uh, more hardware that is more modern. Think your your latest releases of NVIDIA, your latest releases of, of uh, the Intel core processors or Ryzen processors. So if you're trying out Linux and you're going to a thrift store or a Craigslist or a used computer shop and uh, or just digging through your attic or your basement looking for that old computer that you put down there and forgot about, you're going to be able to run that system on Debian really well. If you're going out to Best Buy and buying a, a new computer and you want to install Linux onto it, uh, first if you do that, I always recommend going to the open box segment. Why bother giving Windows another license sale, you know? Whereas the open box, somebody's already given Windows that's cut, why not? Um, but if you're going to do something that's much more modern, you're probably going to have to 
uh, get out there and use something more based on Arch. So you're going to look at, uh, you're not going to be, uh, if you're new to Linux, you're not going to be downloading the, the raw Arch file and figuring out how to install it unless you're, you're really into reading the deep documentation and things like that. But you're going to install like uh, Endeavor OS is what I'm using on my media PC. You could do a uh, Manjaro, you could do... Um, um, Arco Linux has some good builds. So, um, I think Garuda Linux, I didn't mention that one earlier, that's uh, a new and rising star in the Arch world. Uh, so these are all things based on Arch that are going to support some of the latest hardware. And so those are the types of things you're going to do if you're doing a latest and greatest computer. Whereas if you're getting an old, an old system, uh, digging something out of the basement, getting something at a thrift shop, uh, a computer rehab store. Um, one of my computers I bought from the uh, surplus supply store at the local university. All of these are great options if you want to do something uh, with Debian based, so a Debian Ubuntu. Now the one exception I'd mentioned with Ubuntu earlier is that Ubuntu itself uh, because they're big corporate and they do work with some of the latest stuff as well, well, they may not always support the latest kernel, unlike Debian, although they are getting a little bit more modern in their kernel than Debian itself, which it's based on. Uh, but Ubuntu itself is doing a lot of the back-end work to port some of the latest things that aren't even an arch into Ubuntu. So there was just an update recently where they were working with the, um, the uh, specific Intel processors used in data centers uh, to better support those with Ubuntu builds, uh, particularly because of their IoT uh, uh, systems that they do. So these are all things to think about. Your hardware might determine, if not the specific distribution you're using, but that's probably going to determine the entire wide family of Linux distributions that you might want to use. So if you're unaware of how to do that, um, uh, how to figure out what you have, First, if you bought it somewhere, it's probably going to have some system specs on the box. If you have like the absolute latest, you just have to do a little bit of internet research. If you have the absolute latest, you know, Intel, like, is there a current one like Crystal Lake or something? You're not going to run that very well off of Debian. Now, I mentioned my laptop. I had to update the kernel to support the video drivers on that particular computer um, because just installing it, it just didn't work well because of the um, the dedicated uh, GPU in that particular laptop was too new for the standard Linux Mint, but Linux Mint gives you the option to easily change the kernels. So that's what I was actually able to do. So those are some uh, thoughts and some ideas regarding your uh, how to pick the Linux family uh, based on the hardware and where you're getting your hardware and things like that. With that, guys, thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.